sitting back thinking last night as I cleared my throat and take a sip of water. <clears throat> mm. As I was sitting back thinking last night, I was like, boy, the production on this channel is about to quadruple. That's times four, right? What is, what's, what's the word for, for times five? You know what I'm saying? One of my number nerds in here. What's the what's the what's the uh the uh technical math word for times five? Not double, triple, quadruple. What's the next word? Like if I'm at Wendy's and I want five patties on my burger, what kind of what kind of stacker do I ask for? <laughs> what's the word? I need to know. I need to know. Yo, Vine, it ain't no fucking <laughs> I need to know quintuple. That's the word. Listen, this channel about to go through so many changes, man. I was sitting back last night. I was thinking. I took my glasses off. I did it then, but I'm not gonna do it now. I took my glasses off, bro, and I was like, it costs a lot of money to run a YouTube channel. <laughs> oh goodness, it costs a lot of money to run a YouTube channel let alone improve one. You know what I'm saying? We've gotten a lot of contribution over the last year or so. Yeah, over the last year or so. What we going to do, indubitably, appreciate you. What we going to do is we're going to apply those funds because they just been sitting in a savings account, really. What we're going to do is we're going to apply those funds and we're going to funnel that thing directly into the channel, bro. Some of y'all have kind of heard me talk about this. But, you know, some of y'all don't watch the show every day. Or, you know, all the shows I put out. So some of y'all may have missed this. But just know, in about two months time, today is May. So it's going to be like June something when I get there. And then I'm going to go on vacation. I'm going to go to Natchez to see my people. Then I'm going to go elsewhere, assuming that the pandemic is over. So, like, around, like, July or something, like mid-July, this channel is going to look totally different from live stream to film session. The podcast is going to be ready to go. Second channel stuff and all that. We're going to be firing on all cylinders. I'm going through that change right now. That's currently what I'm going through. I'm 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 walking around the house making phone calls trying to put things in place. Who the fuck is this? You know what I'm saying? I'm putting these things into place to make this channel worthy. And let me tell you how it happened. This is how it happened. And take note uh for anybody that wants to do anything in life, anybody that wants to run a YouTube channel because I get a lot of people trying to send me emails and text messages and Facebook messages and Instagram. Yo, Vach, how do I run a successful YouTube channel? You must become obsessed with the results. That's free game for you. So whether you're trying to work out and get small or big, whether you're trying to start a business, whether you're trying to hustle on a block, building a YouTube channel, you playing football, you're getting plastic surgery to make yourself handsome. Whatever you do, if you're trying to get better at it, you must be obsessed with results. And I got the first idea of that when I got the 50K, right? Because I remember once upon a time on YouTube, I could have 2,500 subs. Like 2,500 subs. And I go, oh, shit. <laughs> we going to the boom, boom room tonight. I remember those days. Vividly. I remember the days where I'll get 20 people in the chat box and I'll call my mama losing my mind. I remember. 
but it wasn't enough. You must continue to move the goalpost. This is the only time I recommend moving the goalpost. Just because I'm the number one contender does not mean I'm the champ. Just because I'm the champ don't mean I can't lose 15 pounds and beat another champ and be champ twice. Then I want to be in the Hall of Fame. Hopefully by the time I get there, I'll be on some old, I'll be on some whole nother stuff. But you must become obsessed with results. You know what I'm saying? So with that being said, <clears throat> you know, I kind of hit my little 50,000 mark like however long ago it was, like a, like a couple weeks ago, like two, I believe, whenever we did that long stream, that live stream. However long ago we did it, we there. But the fact that I'm not comfortable with that 50 is the next move. Because if I can get 50 with this setup, and let me explain this setup. I got a goofy-ass little mixing board that I got from Amazon. This same laptop that I had since 2011. The same refurbished Mac laptop since 2011 that I've been working on that can't even uh, <laughs> run, my, <laughs> run my draft streams properly. And this little microphone. But... Just because I got 50 with this doesn't mean I can get 100 with this. I probably can. I probably can. But if I make everything better and continue to be obsessed with those results, I can probably get to 100 quicker. But the key is when I get to that 100, don't be happy with the hundred move the goalpost again i was talking to coach evans last night he's in the chat box right now i would love for coach evans to hit me with some hateful words he said oh that's peculiar let me text Vach. hey Vach, in my recommender section i see your sean oakman video from four years ago I say, damn, it's been a while. So I say, that was my first big video. Got 18,000 subs on it back in the day when I used to call my mom and lose my mind over 18,000 subs, right? I went back to watch the Sean Oakman video and I made me sick. It looked terrible. Sounded bad. It was horrible. The analysis wasn't on point. My talking and my approach, the swagger wasn't on point. And I was like, goodness, this Sean Oakman video is terrible. But if you compare that Sean Oakman video to one of my 2020 projects, if I still sound that bad, then I'm the problem. So I'm happy I don't still sound that bad. I'm going to say this and then we're going to move on to the next bit of work. I'm glad that I improved. So now my next moving of the goalpost is in 2020. I want to look back and look at my CD Lamb video and go, goodness, what is this caveman shit I'm watching? That's my next goal. To get to 2020, to look back at my Neville Galmore video and go, ugh, I would love to delete this. <laughs> I just want my view count to stay consistent. So I'm about to invest a shitload of money and I'm going to be incredibly transparent with y'all. $10,000. Cool. There we go. I'm going to be incredibly transparent with y'all because to be fair, I could do a lot of irresponsible shit with that. And I want to do a lot of irresponsible shit with that. I would love to buy shoes and build this rifle <laughs> and go on a trip. <laughs> <laughs> and all this other shit. I would love to do it. But that's my new technology budget. I'm going to get this big goofy ass uh, uh, PC. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I'm going to run. The, I'm a, I can be able to run real life at 60 frames per second. You know what I'm saying? Because there's a lot of things that I want to do that this 2011 Mac simply can't. I got cameras on the way that can record in 4k this computer don't know what the fuck 4k is <laughs> it wasn't out <laughs> you know what i'm saying so we're gonna get this computer to computer to computer this monitor 
these cameras. We're going to get lines on the screen. We're going to be better at editing. We're going to take classes to learn how to edit. We're going to get a proper little system up in here. The sound is going to improve and it's ultimately going to make the channel better. So when I look back at my CD lamb film session or this goofy ass live stream, I'm going to go, ugh, how far we have come. All right. I just wanted to, to to be transparent with y'all for a second before I move on to my cowboy thoughts for today. Okay. Just wanted to put those thoughts on the table. I wanted to shout out all of my super chat people, pay, PayPal, Patreon, cash app people. I wanted to, I wanted to salute all y'all, all my people that have bought merch. I wanted to salute all of y'all because you guys have funneled resources back into this channel to make it great. So like August or something, Oh, goodness. August is going to be ridiculous. But we'll cross that road whenever we get there. All right. So let's run this for the cardio, man. Uh, what I want to talk about today is uh, I wanted to talk about the Cowboys, their rookies, and what I call, how did I name this? Uh, a competition unit. Let me go back to my edit button. How did I, what, what did I say? What did I say? Competition units. Absolutely. Um, what do I mean by that? Well, let's talk about, uh, we're, we're, only going to talk about my seven draft picks then then we're going to open up the phone lines and let y'all kind of talk about whatever hell y'all want to talk about um but say for example like we're going to draft this new um d tackle we draft him in the seven round kid named Vash Lombardi right and we come in we know the seventh round d tackle ain't competing with Jerry McCoy day one he's going to be competing with these guys right I was sitting back thinking of that I was doing my Rondell Carter video um, from James Madison. He's an undrafted free agent and the Cowboys acquired him. I was like, yeah, man, he may not be fighting, you know, team toxic in them, but he's going to be competing with Jalen jokes and this fella. You know what I'm saying? And that made me think I haven't done this for our draft picks. You know what I'm saying? So I'm going to be doing that for our draft picks. Just talking about the, the uh, competition, you know, some of the guys that they're going to be dealing with in camp and who they need to beat to, uh, you know, make the team and be, Productive. Uh Danny Lunkenheimer. Alright then. <laughs> he dropped the deuce in the super chase. He, he say, uh, what do you think on Carson Wentz? I mean, or pardon me, thoughts on Carson Wentz. I don't think about Carson Wentz, so I don't really have thoughts on Carson Wentz. <clears throat> I apologize. Um <laughs> and shouts out to Payback Carter. He dropped three in the super chat. He says Cowboy Nation Vach, fan of your channel. Salute to you, my guy. Salute to you. My whole thing about Carson Wentz is that I don't, I feel like I don't care about him enough to do a proper assessment on it. And since you ask me, um, I don't want to just half ass you. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I don't want to just give you some answer that doesn't mean anything to me because I, I would rather give you a non answer than an answer that I really care about or, or, or an answer that, uh, that I don't care about. Pardon me. So that's just that. Let's talk about this, though. Sedarian Lamb, CD, my guy. Mm -hmm. I kind of wish Randall Cobb was here. A part of me wish Randall Cobb was still here. For one, because I just think CD Lamb is going to be so much better than him. And I ain't just kind of half-stepping, y'all, man. I think CD Lamb going to be the best receiver on this team in like two years or so. But that's just because that's just, that's just I think really highly of Cooper. You know what I'm saying? But I think if Randall Cobb was on this team today, today, I think Randall Cobb would be the fourth best receiver on this team, and I'm not BSing. I'm not BSing. I know when we first got Randall Cobb, we was we was kind of trying to make him live off of old bodies, and I think he was so good in our offense simply because, you know, of the offense that we have. I think our our, our offense is fantastic as a whole. And that if Randall didn't have those handful of drops and if he didn't miss that one or two games, then we would have had 3,000 yard receivers. I believe that. So Randall Cobb gets his 90 something targets or something. I'm sure that that, that there's a, a numbers nerd that can help me out with that, right? Randall Cobb got like 85 to 92 targets. Can you imagine what CD Lamb going to do with 90? Huh? I think Lamb is. Of course, Lamb is a better yak guy, in my opinion. And I think today, today, he's a better yak guy than Cobb today. Cobb's a better route runner. Cobb can probably get open better. But I think in terms of what we're going to be using guys for on this offense, I think I think, I think think Lamb does more for our offense. Let me tell you why. There was a lot of people trying to put 
Cobb on the outside, but the problem was Cobb was like 5'9". <laughs> like just because we seen him do it before doesn't mean that he was going to overall be good at it. You know what I'm saying? So I don't think we we put Cobb on the outside as much as we thought we were going to do just because that's what he did in his old days when we was living off old bodies, right? Randall Cobb ain't playing outside for you. C.D. Lamb can 100% play outside for you, which will enable you to put Amari Cooper in the slot. Good luck to you, to your safeties and your linebackers and your nickel corners. Good luck to you. I just think on so many levels we improve there. But <clears throat> pardon me. But Randall Cobb ain't here though. Randall Cobb is gone. So the guys that C.D. Lamb got to compete with is like Cedric Wilson. Yeah. <laughs> John V. Johnson and Devin Smith in them. And look, I like Devin Smith in them. Nothing makes me happier or nothing makes me more excited than the idea that we can come out in a, you know, four receiver set or come out and empty or something. And you got, you know, Devin Smith and, and, and Gallup on the outsides. And you just going to let, you just going to let Coop and CD lamb tear up everything inside the numbers. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? Running them scenes right up the hashes. Are you kidding me? You kidding me? Don't let Vosh play. Don't let don't let Vosh coach nothing because we're gonna win every Super Bowl. They're gonna want to give me a the the league gonna mess around and collude to get Vosh Lombardi out the seat because Cowboys gonna have nine that nine damn Super Bowls messing with me. In a perfect world, that's what I would do, but that's what ain't gonna happen. In a perfect world, Coop is gonna play slot sometimes. Uh Lamb is going to play slot 68% of the time. And that just is what it is. But it makes me happy that we didn't have step, um, that we didn't have step, you know, receiver. It makes me happy that we, that we didn't necessarily do that. Um, now, if anything happens to any of those guys, like if something happens to Cooper, what do we do? Then I'm moving Gallup over to the other side. I'm putting CD at flanker. Uh, we're probably going to figure out what we're going to do with slot. Probably put Cedric Wilson up there. Or we'll just keep everything the way it is and put Devin Smith where Coop once was. We got depth now. Opposed to just saying, all right, we're just going to run Cedric Wilson out there to see what's going to happen. Sedarian so smokes those guys immediately. You see what I'm saying? And then if anything bad happens, knock on wood, if anything bad happens, then we can, you know, run <laughs> your fifth and sixth cornerback out there. But what does that mean for guys like Kendrick Rogers? I, I saw somebody say something in my comment section, well, in my chat box right now. I saw somebody say something about Kendrick Rogers, and I just hurry up and pretended like I didn't see it. I just wanted to pretend like I didn't see it. Because after I watched film on Kendrick Rogers, I mean, I, I, I mean, <laughs> I kind of, I kind of fell a little bit on Kendrick Rogers. Kendrick Rogers is gonna have to come in and beat seven people or six. Let me count. Hold on, give me thirty seconds to think about this. He's gonna have to beat uh, Gidry from Mississippi State first of all. Uh, John Vay, Noah Brown is still here. Um, Aaron Park is another one of his undrafted classmates from Rhode Island, so he's gonna, he's gonna have to beat him. Uh, Ventrell Bryant, who's a very important player on our, you know, coverage teams or whatever, you know what I'm saying, kicking game and stuff. And then, like, Devin Smith. So, if you want Kendrick Rogers to start, then he's going to have to, or at least be the fourth receiver, fifth receiver. Kendrick got, like, six guys to beat that I don't think he's going to beat. I'm out on Kendrick Rogers, man. That's just where I'm at. If you, if you want to make him a like a camp body, a practice squad body, so when you play against big tight ends, you play against big receivers, he can give you a look in practice. If that's what you want to do with Kendrick Rogers, fine. But I don't want nobody on my team that can't play 20 to 20 and then get to the red zone and then be consistently great in the red zone. Can't have it. All right. Let me take a sip of water. We're going to move on. Talk about uh, one of my favorite guys in this draft that, I ain't really, you know, I ain't really talk about him as much because I've been so excited about this Lamb news and how good the back of the draft was. I never got a chance to really get into um, digs like that. Mm. Always keep it gangster. Do you think Dak will have a thousand yard receipt? 
three thousand yard receivers this season. Let me tell you something. He woulda. <laughs> he was about to <laughs> drops and shit. If Randall Cobb didn't have them drops and he didn't get hurt two games, Dak has three one thousand yard receivers. Indubitably, if Dak didn't have those drops or the, those forty one drops that we had, Dak shatters Tony's records. We probably would have had three 1,200 yard receivers. And y'all go look at the numbers. Look, I'm not, I'm not making this up. So yeah, I 100%. I 100% think Dak. Uh, Dak is going to. Um, Dak is going to improve. All his numbers going to go up, and I think our receiving total numbers are going to go up. 100%. And I think partially because if you put the ball in Randall Cobb's hands, I mean, of course he can run from people, but if you put the ball in CeeDee Lamb's hands, good luck to you. So we'll see what's going to happen. <clears throat> we'll see what's going to happen. Uh, that's not indubitable. <laughs> Y'all know I got to get the indubitable shirt coming. We got to get the indubitable shirt. Um, but, yes, Stefan Diggs, right? So if you tuned into the roundtable a couple of days ago, it was a fantastic roundtable, by the way. If you tuned into the roundtable, there was a lot of discussion about our corners, who's going to play what, and where you're going to put them. Um, I don't think Cheeto loses a fight this year. So I think Cheeto is going to be one of your receivers. Now, what happens with your other two guys, it gets kind of weird because one of them is going to play the right side of the field. The other is going to play nickel. Okay? Some guys play better outside. Some guys play better inside. Diggs can kind of do both. But Diggs' best position is outside. But the easier dude to beat might be inside. So it's going to be a weird conversation, man. I think in a perfect world, Jordan Lewis should be the cornerback on the right. And A.B. should be the nickel guy because A.B. is a better nickel guy, in my opinion. The problem with that is that J. Lou is a little bitty over there on the outside. He, he, he's, not a, he, he's probably the shortest person in this entire cornerback room. And not that I care. I don't care, but it's about what these coaches are talking about. And if you look at every – bro, if you still think Rodgers is great at the – right. Um – if you take a look at everybody in that in that cornerback room, whether it be guys that we acquired and um, guys that we drafted, that don't none of them look like J. Lou. So I'm under the impression that J. Lou got to knock some boots and 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 be the best cornerback out there in order for 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 them to give him a a, a fair shot. Now is that right? I don't think so. <clears throat> Is that fair? Absolutely not, but life ain't fair. I was watching this lion documentary where the most vicious lions took over this big-ass territory in Africa for like 20 years, like 12 years, something like that. They never had lions do that, but they had this young coalition of lions. It was four of them, and they came up, and they ruined Mufasa's life. They didn't give him a fair fight, <laughs> but they did it. Sometimes it just is what it is. J. Lou may be a better corner than A. B., but it just may be is what it is. He may be a better corner, but but Reggie Robinson got the got the measurables that they want. So I think it's going to be a weird conversation. Let me look at my notes. I think Diggs' fight is going to be with J. Lou and Anthony Brown. Now, could we walk out of this situation with Cheeto, J. Lou, and A. B. starting and Diggs on the bench? Sure, it could be that. Diggs will go play some, you know punt coverage or something sure it could be that but i think what's probably going to end up happening is that Diggs is going to compete directly for whoever the whoever didn't win the outside job gonna play nickel and in my opinion i think j lou is a better outside guy than brown so brown's gonna be in the nickel and then brown is gonna directly have to compete with Diggs for who plays and plays in the nickel that's my thoughts Either that or whoever wins the outside job or whoever, you know, is the better nickel guy just just plays nickel. And then the outside guy competes with um, Diggs for the outside job. Meaning um, if J. Lou and Brown are 
are battling for nickel and J. Lou is a better nickel, then Diggs is going to battle Brown for the outside spot. I think it's going to be interesting, man. I think it's going to be interesting, man. Got some super chats, man. I just want to address y'all real fast. Uh, the phone lines are open if y'all want to call into the show. Uh, 515-616-5187. It's on the screen. It's in the description. Uh, they're going to ask you for an access code. Type it in, 309104. Uh, Quentin Cornette dropped the deuce. Appreciate you. Carito. Montana dropped five. He says, oh, okay, cool. We got that. We got that. And um, John Jones dropped five. Shots out to John Jones. And, uh, hey, man, did y'all see the fights this weekend? <laughs> did y'all see Francis Ngannou <laughs> remove Jarzinho's chin? Did you see it? We might talk about that later when all this is over. With chat box, let me know if y'all want to talk about that later after the show. Um, But, yeah, man, D- Diggs is in a very interesting um situation to where I think he's going to make the team regardless. I think he's going to make the game day roster regardless. I don't think he's going to be ever – He's. I don't think he's going to ever be – um, like a non-active player because even if he can't find a starting role, he can still find somewhere to play in the kicking game. And I think that's going to be valuable for him. So before I move on to, to Neville, I just want to keep it at cornerback real, real, uh, real fast. So let's just talk about Reggie. I think Reggie got a totally different fight um, day one. I think Diggs actually, com- actually competes to play day one. I don't think Reg is in this conversation at all. You know what I mean? So Diggs is is um, directly competing with Brown and Lewis. I think Robinson is competing with Kennedy and Goodwin. In my mind, right? Um, <clears throat> we we just picked up Kennedy, so Kennedy ain't really got. He ain't really got. You know, like Maurice Kennedy. He ain't got no. You know, got no real mark on his team, but. Um, CJ Goodwin, we've seen him take up roster spots just because he plays kicking game. I'm fine with that. Um, but in my mind, this is who Reggie's going to have to fight with. And Reggie being long guy, I mean that, you know, that's the kind of cornerback that you want to play corner. I'm just, I'm just talking about this year, day one. I think Reggie's going to be in a better situation to take that four, four 40 and just go cover punts and run down and tackle on kickoff. And if he can do that better than Canada, or um, what's his face, or Goodwin, I think one of those guys get pushed off a bridge based on what Reggie Robinson does. I think that's real life. Chat box tell me if I'm bugging, right? So even though they they both were drafted the same position, I'm talking about Robinson and Diggs, they were both drafted at the same position, and I think they have relatively the same athletic profile. I just think the actual cornerback skill is a mile apart. I think Diggs is a mile a better cornerback than Robinson. Not that Robinson's bad, because Robinson definitely has things that he's good at. I'm just talking about day one production. Right? We could get to a point in the future where J. Lou and, and Cheeto don't get no money at all. They just they just not going to get paid by Dallas. We could get to a point to where that's a real-life thing, and our two outside corners of the future is Reggie and Diggs. I just think I just think Diggs is good enough to play right now. Reggie, maybe not. <clears throat> so that's interesting, man. That's interesting. We're just going to have different fights on that. Uh, we got a caller. Give me 30 seconds, Carl. I see you. I see you up there, Carla. Give me 30 seconds. Y'all go ahead and get y'all get y'all place in line, man. Cause we ain't gonna be here too long. I gotta go watch Ozark later on. Me and Nene. Go watch Ozark. Anyway, um, so what was I saying? Galmore. Now, what's Galmore's fight? I think Galmore has a has a um has a better chance to be productive day one because he just got less people to fight with. If you look at cornerback safeties or whatever you know we carry a lot of those guys we carry a lot of linebackers a lot of you know corners a lot of safeties because those are the guys that cover punts and play kickoff right d tackles don't necessarily cover punts and play kickoff i've seen it before but they don't do it all the time right so the problem and the good thing but the problem for the most part with neville galmore is that he's in a situation where it's less defensive tackles to compete with him but he's also in a situation where, yes, it's less tackles to compete with him because we're carrying less tackles to play on game day. 
right? So we know Neville's not competing with Tyrone and them. You know what I'm saying? Tyrone Crawford. We know he's not competing with Gerald McCoy necessarily. Um, I think he's competing with one guy directly with Tristan Hill. There's an undrafted guy behind him, Garrett um, Marino from UAB. That I like him a lot. We're going to be doing a film session on him soon. Um, I think Galmore is ahead of Marino just off the rip. He's better than him. He's ahead of him. There's draft, there's draft capital invested or whatever, so we're not going to get too much into that. But I do think Neville Galmore has a direct competition with Tristan Hill. Now, if he loses to Tristan Hill, that don't mean you cut Neville Galmore. Well, that don't mean that you move on from Neville Galmore. Hell, if he can't beat Tristan Hill, that don't mean Neville Galmore is bad. It's just that Neville Galmore doesn't have an offseason under his belt. Neville Galmore doesn't have, um, you know, doesn't have his man body yet. And Tristan just has been through an offseason before, right? Now, what makes this different <clears throat> is that he plays D-tackle. Right. The only thing that makes this different with, you know, like CD Lamb and these and these cornerbacks or whatever, D tackle I just value differently. Even when we move on and talk about center, I just think playing in the trenches is different than being a skill guy. I just think it's so much different because your your job is to move grown men. Now, if Neville Galmore was a first-round talent, then we can have this conversation differently. But he's not. He's a second-round talent that we got in the third. That's different. So Neville Galmore is going to have to compete with a dude that's been on this team before, which is Tristan Hill. Can he beat Tristan Hill? Sure. Sure. 100%. It could happen. But it's also Tristan's job to make sure that that doesn't happen, that Neville doesn't beat him necessarily. You know what I mean? Um, we're going to talk about two more players, and we're going to get into the phones because I really want to hear what y'all are talking about. Shouts out to JB Reed. Drop five in the super chat. Appreciate you, sir. Um, or ma'am. <laughs> sir, salute to y'all. And uh, Mitchell Lewis, he says, which undrafted free agent uh, you feel the strongest about making the team right now? <laughs> Give me like, give me like two weeks. <laughs> give me a week to answer that question, man, because I think we have some interesting undrafted free agents, and I think impact and what we're asking them to do is going to be important when asking questions like this. You know, we could go for a premier position like Rondell Carter. Oh well, he's a pass rusher. We need pass rushers, right? I mean, I get it, but what if you only need a a blocking tight end? You know, then Sean McKeon could make this team before Rondell could. What if what if um Jameez Olawale shows up and lose the fullback battle to Sanu uh, uh, TCU fullback? Then the position may not be as important, but with that, you know what I'm saying, he has a better chance of getting involved there. I think Reggie Robinson makes a bigger impact than Diggs um, year one. Cause I think Reggie Robinson going to play all the damn kicking game units. All of them. I don't think Diggs does, but in the future, Diggs, you know what I'm saying? So, you know, it just depends when we talking about these, uh, about these rookies and you know, where you going to put them? <clears throat> Where you gonna put them is the uh is the big question. Where you gonna put them and what their what are their competition like when they get there? I think all those questions are important. Um, two more things and then we're gonna get directly into these phones and hear what y'all are talking about. Um Tyler Badass, right? And I kinda wanna call him Tyler Biotis because these I am legend monsters calling him badass now. And some of the four letter network and dot com people calling him badass now. And that's like when you're on Facebook and Facebook cool because all your friends on it, but then old people get on Facebook. <laughs> and now you like, I don't want to get on Facebook anymore. <laughs> then you get on Snapchat and realize your mama got a Snapchat and you don't want to be on Snapchat. No more. That's, how, that's how, you know, <laughs> that's how it is with these with these phrases with me, man. So I, I, I think I just want to call him Beatish now. We're going to call him Tyler Badass for the sake of um, consistency. But um, Tyler, right? So I've kind of touched on this a lot, really, because this one's the most interesting to me. Um, <clears throat> Tyler can 100% play day one for you. I just think it depends on who wins the left guard spot. 
but I also think it's going to directly correlate into like who wins the who wins the swing tackle spot and how Tyron feels that day. You know, because if one day Tyron Smith wakes up and go ouch, because I promise you this, how about this? I think. Well, overall, I hope that pick was a waste, and I hope Wentz playing sucks. Loves okay, cool. Um, damn, what was it? Yeah, cool. cool. Listen, so Tyron Smith is gonna wake up one day and not want to, you know, practice or something, right? And it and it could just be a maintenance thing, right? We get the training camp. We know Tyron Smith got a lot of days off. We know Tyron Smith. Um, oh, he's just sitting out, just a maintenance day, just a chill day, right? I think we're gonna run into a lot of lineups to where. Connor Williams is going to be our left tackle. Um, Connor McGovern is going to be our left guard, and Tyler Badass is t- bad ass, badass badass is going to be the center. I think that's going to be a real life conversation. To be fair, the center position ain't been right since Antoine Woods punched punched Trav in the face. Ever since Antoine Woods punched Trav in the face, we've been having problems or just issues figuring out what we're going to do at center. Or what's the move at center? Question marks at center. I want to cut Antoine because of that. But it's a real life thing. So now, Tyler is in a situation where I think he's better than Joe Looney. Me personally. The problem with that is I know Joe Looney's in his man body and Joe Looney is probably ready to play today. But I lost a lot of respect for Joe Looney when I saw when I just saw Indomitian Sue pick him up and place him on top of Zeke like that. I, I kind of felt the I felt a certain way about Joe Looney when I saw that, man. I was discouraged about Joe Looney when I saw that, right? So it's made me want to get bulk at center. It made me want to get that. So what Tyler gives you is a dude that in Dominican Sue ain't just going to pick up and move. But to be realistic, Tyler probably ain't ready for that check because of NFL man body. Now, if there's any position in the offensive line where you can kind of hide and help him, I think center is that position. In my opinion, you can just Voltron it up, make both guards gangsters and move guys around. Right. But then you got both the Connors fighting that left guard. So what I think happens is when Tyron Smith is healthy, let's just say when 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 Tyron is healthy, Connor Williams and Connor McGovern are gonna fight for the left guard spot. That's just in my mind, right? And who and assuming this was gonna make it really weird, right? If Connor McGovern beats Connor Williams for the left guard spot then you got to start Biotis at center. Which makes things weird, right? But if Connor Williams wins the left guard spot like you assume he can, then I think McGovern goes to play center. I don't think Joe Looney starts on his team, man. I think we got way too much competition for Joe Looney to start on his team. And not that I hate Joe Looney. I think he is a very serviceable back. I just don't think this is the game for him. So when talking about Tyler Biotis, he's going to have to compete with Looney, McGovern, and Redmond. That's his fight. That's his plight. Now, of course, is Tyler the future at center? I think so. But we're talking about this year. Um, Bowser says, um, are you comfortable with Connor at left tackle? Yeah, yeah, that's what he was. (laughs) That's what he was. That's what he did in college. He was a left tackle. Actually, everybody on our offensive line except for the centers, I think they played tackle at some point. Leo, Zach, um, Connor, Tyron was the right tackle. Uh, yeah, for the most part. So, sure, yeah, yeah, put Connor Williams right at left tackle and, yeah, let him fly. Let him fly. Last one, and then we're going to get to the calls. Bradley and I, uh, Easy and simple. I think Bradley and I's job is to beat the undrafted pass rushers because there's plenty of them. I think Bradley and I got the most competition out of all these guys. Bradley got the hardest fight out of all these guys because there's so many people in the room. It's so many people in the room. Like, Tyler is John Wick when he's just shooting Common in the subway station. It's just him versus Common. Like, Bradley is John Wick when the whole New York City trying to kill him. You know what I'm saying? He got so many people to fight with, man. He got, in terms of last year, guys, I think he got Jalen Jokes and Joe Jackson to fight with immediately, first of all. 
Um, then we got um, just the guys in his in his class right now. So Rondell, um, um, my uh, North Texas guy, Ladarius. You got the Kamara kid from Kansas. You know what I'm saying? Like Bradley and I got some fights, man. He got some fights. And I think he can pull it off. I think he can beat him. I think his biggest competition is Jalen Jokes because both those guys are are similar. Not like size because Jalen Jokes is a big-ass dude that's kind of quick and twitchy. Um, but I think in terms of the type of rusher they are, the stand-up rushers that they are, I think his direct competition is Jokes. And I think Bradley beats out these undrafted guys. But Bradley going to have the hardest time, like, you know, winning these fights and dealing with these guys. You know what I'm saying? Um, but that's good for us, though. That just means we got a lot of guys that can play. And when it comes time, man, we're going to cut some people that we do like. We're going to cut some players that we had, you know, big dreams for. But it is what it is, man. All right. So it's 730. This is what we're going to do. We got callers. But every caller that calls in, I need y'all to be aware of two things. One, I got other callers. Two, I'm leaving in, I'll say, 35 minutes to go watch Ozark with Nene. <laughs> so I just need all my callers to be aware of that. Um, make your points and kind of make them concise, and we'll just go from there. Let's run it for the cardio. Let's go uh, Spinny JP. What's happening, man? Hey, what's going on? Everything cool, my guy. What you got for the show? Oh, um, uh. oh uh, yeah, I heard you talking about uh, Rogers. Uh-huh. Uh, that's the one um, that, I'm, that I'm saying that he, I hope he makes his team, man, because last year we struggled inside the red zone, so even inside the 20s, even inside the 10s, runs he right, runs he left, runs right. Same thing over and over and over. And I see dog in him. I know he got to beat our competition. But it's still, them bums that we got on the team, you know, I've been up here for years already. Three or four years. And we ain't never had six stones, six stars to see. You know who he reminds me of? is Matt Cap, a dog. Now, when Matt Cap came in, he didn't have a bunch of route running. He couldn't get separation. But when the ball been thrown in there, he go get it. <laughs> and we tied up to all these contracts with um, Cooper, Gallup, and Lamb, and a couple more of the Caps. Yeah. But when the ball's in the air, they got trouble. Well, and we need to get at least two. We need to get at least six, four, six, five receivers to go up and get the ball because we've been struggling. Well, Kendrick Rogers is tall. Now, he's 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 tall, but yeah. out of the sixteen games that he's played in college, he only really was a really good goal line guy for three games. Like he was very hot and cold. Um, and I don't think he's DK Metcalf neither because DK Metcalf is a good receiver inside the twenties, like from twenty to twenty, and then he's he's also a good receiver in the red zone. So you know. I don't. I'm not necessarily ready to say that he's like you know. Do we have a jump ball guy? Do we have a Do we have a jump ball guy? I, I me personally, I don't. I don't think we got to have a jump ball guy. I think we got to have a jump ball guy. Okay, well, well, I if, think so. If 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 that's the case, but have we struggled in the red zone last year? Sure. Have I'm we saying. struggled in the red zone with Mar Everything Mar been catching a sure. little. Oh, sure. To the to the, to the to the end zone a little. A little SD pass. Oh, we sure. we, we, we we hit him in the we would hit him on the sideline. Uh, he would tiptoe, tiptoe, and tiptoe. Okay, that's good. Sure, that's cool though. Sure, that's cool. But when we struggle, when we really struggle, like in that we 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 had three plays with these against who was that in Minnesota? We had nobody throw the ball to. But listen, this is my problem though. Kendrick, won that game. But listen, this is my problem though. Kendrick Rogers in college wasn't an elite jump ball guy neither. <laughs> he did a little bit, but he wasn't. Uh, but he, huh? Are you smoking? I'm not. <laughs> Are you smoking? I'm not. <laughs> okay. Well, give me some of that if you did. He was. He, he was translate over. He was not an elite jump ball guy. Oh man, you tripping, man? You tripping, boss? 
Oh, I, I disagree with you. Okay, Spanny. Okay. I got mine. Okay, listen. Okay, listen. Okay, listen. Okay, listen. Do we need that? Okay, listen. Do we need that? Okay, listen. Can I listen? So let's be fair though. He was really good in the Clemson game. He was really good versus LSU. He had another game versus uh, Mississippi State. Besides those three games, when was Kendrick Rogers an elite jump ball guy? I don't know. No, he, no, he wasn't. Throughout the season. No, he wasn't because I watched him. I watched but, him. But we talk, we, I watched we're him. Talking about now, no, we're talking about now when he's translated over to the NFL. That's even worse. Do we have a jump ball guy on the team. That's even worse because I want you to be better in it's college like, to give me the notion that you can be great in the league. But if I'm not but seeing, has, but if I'm not but seeing it has, from you, but he, if he went, but if I'm not seeing it from you in college, then what makes you think that I would see it from you in the league when the competition gets better? Well, what about his toughness, though? Because we show that he's a dog and we got some toughness out there. I think he crapped out in a lot of games. Time they fall down. I think he crapped out in a lot of games. I think he, he played kind of soft well, in a lot of he, games. No, I disagree with you. Okay, t- okay. Comes, so, he, so, he's, fighting so, for the, he's fighting, though. So listen, besides I mean, your question, how many people take to get him down though? How about this though, Spencer? Huh? Because because he he's he he's not that kind of receiver. He's not the catch the ball and drag people guy. He only make plays from where he starts he, to fifteen yards. He doesn't get dragged down because he's not a yet guy. In the Mississippi game, in the in the Mississippi State game, he got hit and he dragged four people to the end zone. He was he we was don't have that on the team. He, was, no he, he was close to, he was close to he was You can holler all you want, but he was close to the end zone when when that happened, Spinny JP. Now you ask me, do we have do we dogs have at receiver? I think I think I think Michael Gallup I think Michael Gallup is a dog. I don't I don't I don't think you're giving him enough credit. Yeah. I think C D Lamb is fantastic and a Gallup, better I think CD I think dog. I think Gallup. Gallup is a dog. Huh? He is a dog and he is an angry runner, one hundred percent. Plus I think C D Lamb is a is a I think C D Lamb is a more consistent jump ball guy than Kendrick Rogers. Well, if, if Gallup is a dog, or this is a monster, he's the, I call him the elevator man. <laughs> the elevator man. Okay, but look, Spinach JP, besides yeah. those three games, like I said, he had a great Clemson game last year, um, seven overtimes in LSU and Mississippi State. Besides those games, Spinny JP, where did you see it at? Because I promise I'll, I, I will go watch it, I, I will I go assess it. it, and I will come back and yeah. apologize. I will come back and apologize. Where did you see yeah. those games? Even if he signed him, even if we, uh, I'm going to answer that right now. So right how about now, that? Even if, even, if, even if he makes his team, I hope he do. But okay. if you throw that ball up to him, he got it. Because uh, I don't see nobody else. I mean, Lamb is cool, but I don't. So I, you go up and you throw so, the ball up, and I want to go get it. So how about this, though, Spanish JP? I got the stats on the screen right now. And in 2019, right. he only had two touchdowns. Mm-hmm. He only had two touchdowns and one, right. two, three, four, five, six, seven, bomb eight, nine. Bomb. So you just said he was a monster, though. You just said a bomb quarterback, though. You, you just said he was a monster, Spinny JP. You just said he was a monster. So five minutes ago, so five minutes ago, his 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 quarterback was good enough to make him a monster. But when we put the put the stats on the screen and we don't see it. Now is quarterback bad, Spenny JP? I think you you just leaning into that narrative a little bit. Un- unnecessary, un- unnecessary passes. He wants to go get. Let's look at last year, Spenny JP. Uh, he had that good Clemson game that we talked about right there. Uh, the game versus LSU. It says three receptions, but but he had a lot of like two point um plays that don't count as touchdowns and receptions. So I'm 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 not counting that. But besides that. He didn't have a touchdown in any other game, Spinny JP. I did the film session, and what I nah. saw on film is that he was not separating. He was not physical. He didn't have technique. Uh, there was no hand fighting. He just kind of ran and ran and got covered. That's it. <laughs> and then when he got okay, to the well, red zone, okay, that's your opinion. But when he is is on the film, that's your opinion. Is on film. But when he but when he got to the red zone, he was so one dimensional that all he had to do was put somebody in front of him, and he couldn't get free from that. Spinny JP, I'm not making this up. You know well, I don't. You know I don't make nothing up. Spinny JP, is, is that what they doing now in NFL? That no, because look, because look, if you if you 
How about the? Okay. Watch this. Let's say um. Let's say okay. uh. I, I, let me, let's let me, say let we cool then. I'm gonna let you go. Okay. Go. Okay. Go ahead. Let me let me let me say something. Let you go. Okay. If we don't pick this kid up, and we don't sign this kid, sure. If we struggle okay. in the red zone, and he and he accidentally makes it on the uh, <laughs> on uh, on the fight squad, absolutely. And we struggling, and we can't get the ball in the end zone on, on the ten yard line or five yard line, throw the ball up in there. Then you go, then you bring him on there, and you get rid of the bomb we got because what we have now, they decent, but. <clears throat> Like I said, you guys somebody gotta have somebody to go up and get the ball. Let's like make half. And that's what Seattle got. Wasn't you a Rico and Gathers fan? Need. Wasn't you a Rico Gathers fan? It, with the right coach, yeah. With the right coach, <laughs> Rico would have been the right man. Shit. Hi, Spitty JP. I appreciate yeah. it, man. Great call, my guy. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Hey, hey, all right. Thanks, man. <laughs> I got you, Spitty JP. Shit. <laughs> Rico Gathers. Oh, man, let me hang up. I appreciate Spinny JP, man, for, you know, having his own train of thought. But I thought at least I have gotten some kind of, um, you know, some kind of benefit of the doubt that, you know, Vach ain't going to lie to you. You know what I'm saying? Vach ain't going to lie to you, man. You know, I don't like to put narratives together. If I feel something, I really do feel a certain kind of way, man. I just... And look, to be fair, Rodgers could show up and smoke the hell out of everything, man. It could happen. I just don't see it. I personally don't see it. And this was this was my biggest point. My biggest point. Who do you take off the field to put Rodgers on? Who are you taking off the field to put in Rodgers? <laughs> Jesus. Oh man. Uh I do think Michael Gallup does not get enough credit for who he, uh for for how how physical he is. Michael Gallup is really physical, man. You could probably hit me with that Coop ain't physical stuff, but we know Coop is nasty in the red zone cuz of his because of his his route running. And I think partially why Kendrick Rogers can't separate from people is because he's not that route runner and he doesn't have different ways to get open. We saw Coop in the Vikings game, toe tap uh, uh toe tap Tommy is what they was calling him. Coop was getting busy in the red zone. You ain't got to be big and tall to win in the red zone. I just, uh, I'm just not subscribing to it. I'm just not, not subscribing to it. And I like Rogers, man. Rogers had some cool games, man. He was, it was hard to stop him. But, but what I think happened was, I, I think they found a mismatch that worked with him, and he was just able to jump over them kids, man. I think he was able to jump over them kids. But let's, uh, let's move on. Let me lock the phones up. I'm just gonna run these, these four guys. We're gonna move on with our life. Let's go, uh, let's see. What up, Vaughn? What up, Vaughn? Now, now. Hey, man, hey, I'm, 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 hey, I'm calling the vent, dog. Okay, run it, man. Uh-uh, uh, Skinny JP. Uh-huh. Skinny JP, bro, you got to leave that ball alone, cuz. Real talk. <laughs> yeah. Hey, before you call him the show, man, you got to know your stuff, man. You call, you call him the wizard. Oh, boy. You ain't calling no clown. You ain't calling one of them ESPN clowns, dog. Oh, boy. You call the guy that know his stuff, man. You got to stop looking at them highlights, man. You know, you gotta, them highlights can be deceiving. That's what people got to realize, boss. Mm-hmm. Highlights can be deceiving. Yes, a good player got highlights. Don't get me wrong. But highlights can be deceiving. That's highlights for a reason. They only show on their good plays. Sure. Yeah, he might go up and catch a touchdown, but what about that next play when he missed that run, that, that missed that, that cornerback that's coming to make that block? Yeah. You know, he missed a play. You know, that's what Cats got to realize, man. You got to watch film. Film is the truth. Film, the eye in the sky don't lie. You know, and man, I'm so tired of all these old Fisher Price. I don't cuss, man. I'm so tired of these old Fisher Price cowboy fans, man. Yeah. I'm sick of these cats, man. Fish, fish. I mean, just sit back, watch film, stay off of ESPN. If you don't want to come to, to Long Nation or Boss Show or whatever and hear some real cowboy talk, man, go listen to Nicky Spagnoli or what uh, these talking cowboys. Listen to them clowns. Damn. You want to hear that chump stuff, man. When you, when you want to hear some real stuff, man, this was, I'm just calling the vent, man. I ain't calling talking no football talk because you already laying everything out. Mm. Man, <laughs> man, man, listen, Vaughn, one more thing before I let you go, man. We haven't we haven't had a chance to sit down and talk like men for a second. You know what I'm saying? Let me just ask you a question. <laughs> How about C.D. Lamb, yes, though, dog? How about C.D. Lamb, dog? <laughs> I haven't heard it from your voice well, personally, sir. Tell, talk to man, me. Let me tell you something, man. I don't care what they do. All I want to see is like, they can let the mother chumps go. I like all the mother cats. Don't get me wrong. I take that back. You know what I'm saying? But well, we got that city lamb picked up. I took off running outside. Man, I'm going to jump in my tongue, man. <laughs> 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 Bro, I, could, I couldn't breathe, man. Hey, I had to. You know, I was watching the, the show, man, mm-hmm. in uh, uh, the draft for it. 
And man, I left my phone. I had my phone. I had a couple of guys over. Man, I left them cats in the house. Man, I went. I was hollering like crazy. And I came back. I heard you hollering. <laughs> look, man. Look, bro. Look, man. My voice they, was heard. They, they I was going. screaming for ten minutes. Man, I couldn't help it. I couldn't help it, man. Man, let me tell you something, man. These people don't know what's gonna happen. Oh boy. <laughs> they do not. They do not know what's gonna happen, man, with this offense, bro. They do not know. They don't have no idea. They see, they 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 on ESPN talking about yeah, the Cowboys gonna be number five, and bro, I don't see us losing. Mm. Who gonna beat us? That's how. <laughs> that's how I feel, man. That's what. That's where I'm at. That's my mentality. Who's going to beat us? Mm. Yes, I hear, you know, him and boy foot say 12 and 4 and some of these other cats 11 and 5. I mean, so who we losing to? Mm. You <laughs> who see- we losing to? When you're when you looking at, you know, I understand teams be different from year to year, but who are we losing to? Man, Vaughn, like I seen some people sell Cowboys. Uh, well, I got them going nine to seven, ten to six. I'm like, man, where you see that many losses at? Where, where you see them? Where you where you see them at? The hardest fights I see is is like Baltimore and like like San Fran. But like Pittsburgh don't right. scare me. Like 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 right. Seattle. Exactly. Right, Seattle's a good team, but they don't scare me. You know what I'm saying? The Eagles. Man. Did they see what we did to Seattle last time? Man, see, a lot of people don't realize, man, this defense and this offense is going to be – it's going to be totally different, bro. Yeah. It's going to be different. Yeah. It's going to be different. And, and, I mean, and the offense is going to build on what they did last. Man, a lot of people don't realize about, about Mike McCarthy, man. Mm-hmm. The dude is – the dude got a, got an aggressive mindset. Yeah. He got an aggressive mindset. Man, yes, we had the off, the number one offense, number two offense last year, you know, whatever. Man, this dude know this. This dude, one thing that got me in this guy press conference, man, you know, when I was listening to his deal, he was talking about winning the Super Bowl. He was like, man, why trying to win one? He said, I'm trying to win all of them. There you go. You know, when he said that, bro, that's what I'm talking about. There you go. It's a mentality deal, man. This cat, this cat trying to score, he's trying to send a message, you know, and he's going to send a message, and he got the dogs and the weapons to send a message. No, hmm. he's about to go down. I don't see, I don't see nobody. Man, if, if anybody beat us, we're beating ourselves. You know, it's going to be self-inflicted. There you go. There I don't go. see nobody beating us, man. I don't see And then with the defense. The defense is going to get a ball right back to the offense. I, the, man, would, would you call your boys uh, 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 Team Toxic? Team Toxic. <laughs> they on their way, man. Damn. Bro, bro, they hit. Hey, they on their way. They, oh, they there. They yeah. already there. Man, you can call that offense team, pick your points, and go, that's what it's going to be. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Man, Vaughn, appreciate you, man. You're a gentleman and a scholar. Thank you for everything you do, sir. Appreciate you. Hey, bro, you're a professor, man. You're a wizard, man. Don't let these clowns around with me, which I know you're not. You're cool, calm, and collected, man. Keep doing what you're doing, man. I, jo- I join your show, man. Y'all listen to. I-, I-, I think I put it in a post the other day, man. I don't listen to nobody else, man. I stopped talking to listening to Mitch Spagnolia and talk with Cap mm-hmm. I don't listen to that crap no more, man. I've been listening to you guys for a couple of months, bro, and that's it. Man, appreciate <laughs> it's it is. Appreciate you, sir. Salute. All right, bro. Yeah, yeah. One thing I got to do, man, is take this, uh, take this, this live stream and put it in podcast form. I know a lot of people was asking me about that. Uh, that's coming too. It's just that currently my computer can't process that. <laughs> my current computer can't process it really well, and it'll just jam up on me. So when I get the next PC or whatever, I'm gonna have two podcasts. I'm gonna have the Vatch's Voice podcast, and I'm gonna have my my cowboy podcast where i'll be uploading these live streams there plus i'll just also do some other you know some other you know thoughts and stuff like that independent you know shows just to kind of you know to make it happen or whatever so y'all stay tuned for that stay tuned stay tuned stay tuned uh one two three we got three callers and a possible so let's get y'all in here and first of all let me do this too because i saw this let me hit these people um, Miss April, she dropped a Hyundai on the Googles. She said, for the media, I'm ready for production with the, with a little microphone emoji. I didn't even know that they had the little, little microphone emojis. Uh, Miss April love me. I can't wait to give her a hug in real life when all this pandemic over with, you know what I'm saying? I can't hug her too tight cause I know she like a young man and all that, but, <laughs> but. Shots out to Miss April though, dropping the hun done in the uh in the uh Googles and all that. Shots out to Brian Brown, drop twenty five in the what's this the PayPal? I'm about to get him on the phone in a little bit and hear what he got to say. Um, and shots out to Marcus Hardison, man. Everybody keep his wife in 
y'all's prayers and all that. You know what I'm saying? Especially in this uh in this trying times here. Y'all just keep all those peoples in your thoughts, you right? And I appreciate y'all. Um shouts out to me. Coach that away from Miss April, but I, I do agree. Shouts out to her. <laughs> let's get let's get Brian Brown on the phone and see what he's talking about. How you doing, Mr. Brown? I'm doing pretty good. Was that first caller for real, man? He's 100 percent serious. He, was, <laughs> he let, me, let me tell you something. About I like him, but he don't say nothing. He don't believe. He believes it all. Well, go ahead. <laughs> he gonna bring in a 300 yard receiver from college. Damn. He he won't even make the team here. Let alone he ain't gonna play. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, we we got three 1,000 yard receivers possibly this year. Mm-hmm. And if you need somebody to to jump ball catch, see, he can do that. Sure. He had to do that a lot last year because Jalen Hurts was terrible. Sure. Sure, 100%. You know what? That's another good point, man. Everybody want to want to talk about good quarterbacks and bad ones. I think CeeDee Lamb had a bad one, and he overcame it. He overcame it. So now he get a good one. It's going to be fun. Oh, yeah, just think how many yards and touchdowns he would have had if he had a decent quarterback last year. Goodness. Mm, mm, mm. Um, what else you got, man? Uh, who else you like? Any of these uh, these uh, these other rookies you like? Uh, I, I'm really a fan, fan of uh, Trayvon Diggs. I think he's going to be a starter by week four, week five, and he may be the best cornerback on our team by the end of the year. Mm, possibly. Possibly. We'll see if he can, you know, put it all together and, you know, yeah. you know, you know, work on his little, you know, technique and all that. He'll be fine. Sure. Possibly. He could. So, you know, the best thing about it is that we got to play three corners. That's the best thing about it. So even if he doesn't pass, let's say, Cheeto and Jordan, he can still compete for the nickel spot and come in and, you know, win that job. So it's possible. 100%. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I do like our fourth rounder, but I see him as – He's uh, he he's really uh, to me he's uh, either he's high risk. He's either gonna be really good or he's gonna bust. Mm-hmm. Yeah, one hundred percent, one hundred percent. I feel you on that. That's all you got, Brian Brown. And uh, oh, go ahead, go yeah, ahead. Yeah, and ahead. last thing, I do like our third round pick too. I do, I do believe uh, Never he's him. gonna get plenty of playing time this year. Absolutely, absolutely. And, uh, Hopefully Tristan Hill will do something if he does, and we have two good defensive tackles there, the three tech. I tell you what, man, if he doesn't, then I will gladly put Neville go, uh, uh, Neville Galmore over him, and you know, and you know, do and just do whatever we got to do. You know, Tristan, my son, but if he ain't yep. the best, then then he ain't the best for the job. So I feel you on that. Uh, but appreciate you, Brian Brown. Thank you for your contribution. Thank you for your call, sir. All right, no problem. Thank you. Indubitably. Let's see. Let's see. I had a dime in the super chat. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. See my see my laptop crapping out on me right now, man. <laughs> All right, here we go. I got a uh, super chat. Let me scroll back. Richard Greenwood. Shout out to you, Rich. He said, keep up the fantastic work. I salute you, my guy. Appreciate you for the doski woski you know. Let's get some more calls up in here well let me let my computer load up all right here we go <clears throat> we got two callers and a possible possibly let's see what happens here and i might have to unlock the phone carlos what's yeah. happening hey what up Vod? what's good how, my you, guy? how you doing hope you're having a blessed day my man absolutely every day man, is a blessed look, day i just got mm-hmm. go ahead. always always man i just got three points i'll make them swift and fast okay first all this Dak prescott hate has to stop if you if you go to Google right now, mm. and if you look up the most accurate passers in the NFL or all time, mm. you'll see where Dak Prescott's at. Mm. And the only reason I feel that um, Dak Prescott hasn't won as many games is you made a point, I think, a week ago. Would you trust Jason Garrett to take you to the promised land? Damn. Hell to the fuck no. Damn. Hell no. I, don't, I do not think so. You know, so I really think he was really held back at coaching at times. And he would have been more... more um, Accurate if he held, hit Gallup, you know. So that's my point. Yeah. CD Lamb, man, he's gonna. Oh man, I'm just blessed we got him. Shit, he fell into the Cowboys' lap and we leave it in. Cause did you see what on um, the combine? 
yeah. his, his grab. I've seen everything C D Lamb ball. has done in the last two. I've been watching C listen, I've I've done research when he was number nine his freshman year. I've been obsessed with C D Lamb. I, everything. Yeah, man, he's a ball snatcher. Yeah. If the ball's in the air, there's there's a guarantee he's gonna go for it, and that's what we need for sure. And my last point is a question for you. Mm-hmm. Um lately in these past years I feel that Jason Garrett really didn't give an opportunity to some high reward players, like kind of like, well, high risk, high reward players, kind of like Donovan Wilson. Mm-hmm. And do you think McCarthy will give an opportunity to these rookies like Gallimore? Um, I really like Bradley. I call him Bradley the Beast. I would like for him to kind of be more upfront, maybe mix the blitz packages with him mm-hmm. and, you know, just give Diggs and Robinson a shot, you know, because I really feel like the more, the more younger and faster and aggressive we are, the better shot we have of winning. Um, I think at the end of the day, Mike McCarthy is a good coach. First of all, so I don't. So it'll be it'll be bad if he came in here and said, "Well, uh, let me try to get a good example. Um, who's somebody that Jason drafted personally? Um, I, you know, Connor McGovern, right? Connor McGovern, we didn't draft you." We gonna kick you off the bridge just because somebody else drafted you. You know what I mean? I don't. I don't think that's gonna be the case. I think when it gets to training camp, I think everybody's gonna have a have a fair shake. Um, unless your name Cooper Rush, he got pushed off the bridge already. But I do think everybody else is is gonna have a fair shake, and it's gonna be a mixture of Gary guys. It's gonna be a mixture of of his guys. You know, somebody asked me to say, "Well, Vash, why would we keep such and such person? He's a Gary guy." Well, shit, Zach Martin is a Gary guy. <laughs> Zeke is a Gary guy. You know what I'm saying? Uh, Gallup is a Gary guy. Some guys you just got to keep. And Garrett wasn't a bad drafter. Garrett wasn't a bad um, wasn't a bad player evaluator. So let's just kind of get that out there. So I think whoever the best players are, um, whoever the best players are, I just think those are the guys that you know that's going to end up you know getting the spots, regardless. And, and that's how I feel absolutely. Yeah. yeah. And I think what really intrigued me is McCarthy loves to run the ball. So I really feel that um, we're going to get a mix of Zeke and Pollard. And if you get C.D. Lamb, Gallup, and Amari out there, man, who are you going to stop? Who <laughs> who are you going to stop? I tell I mean, you who you will you stop. Got... I tell you who you will stop, Kendrick Rogers. But besides that, though, <laughs> you ain't stopping nobody else. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, man. Yeah, those are my points, man. You have a blessed day. Um, <laughs> I'll, 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 salute, man. All right, man. Appreciate you. <laughs> why, why am I so stupid? <laughs> Can you you can stop Kendrick Rogers, but everybody else, you ain't stopping everybody else. Ah, man, damn, 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 damn. Uh, we got one more call up here. We'll get one more call. I'm gonna kind of mingle in the chat box for like five minutes, and I'm gonna go watch Ozark. Me and old girl gonna walk, go gonna go watch Ozark. So, uh, chat box. Well, I'll check on the chat box in a minute. Let's see. Last caller. Let's run it. Um. And chat box, don't be spamming my chat box because I see a lot of people trying to spam my chat box. Y'all relax. Reggie, what's happening, man? What's good with your vibes? Everything, Shout everything. Out to you, man. Appreciate uh, you. Appreciate you. I appreciate your content, man. You, you, you really go in depth on a lot of things. I don't know why people keep calling, trying to challenge you on on things that you study film on. But we just gonna leave that there. They gotta learn, man. They gotta um, learn one way or another, you know. <laughs> Uh, first of all, I want to address the first caller, uh, JP or whatever his name is. Uh-huh. No disrespect. I just didn't see it. But uh, the Cowboys haven't ran a system or a scheme where it includes a jump ball heavy wide receiver for a good moment of time since we, you know, uh, let Des go. Yeah. Um, just to be um, clear and transparent about that. Uh, second of all, um, that's not going to – determine how we play the game as far as wide receivers on the field. Sure. Uh, it's not just about jump balls. Uh, that's just one skill set. Uh, there are many more, yeah. and I'll just leave that at that. Um, you've explained a lot when it comes to how wide receivers get off the ball, their ability, all of that. So I'm not even going to get into that. Second of all, I'm very hyped about uh, our, our draft choices. I think our draft choices were 100% spot on for where we were, what was available. I think we took the best player on the board at every 
at every pick, mm-hmm. at every pick. Absolutely. And it could be debatable about the quarterback, but you can always groom quarterbacks, so that's good. Uh, third of all, uh, I want to touch on another point about um, building the YouTube channel. Um, one thing you didn't mention is mm-hmm. is personality. Personality is big with, with YouTube if you're going to build content, and you definitely have it. You, you got a lot of personality. You're very original with, with the slang you use. All of that stuff is great. Very good content, super knowledgeable. You have the background. So all of that fits in. So it's only natural you're going to be successful as you continue to strive to be even more successful. So I want to make sure that I congratulate you on where you are now and where you plan to be. Uh, and third off, um, the the player that strikes out to me, the, the pick that has me the most hype, or I would say not hype but very optimistic, I think Neville Gallimore. We, we talk a lot about him, and yes, He's going to have to battle up there to, to, to be able to, to earn that starting spot. But he has a lot of upside from, from all of the film you showed, from all the film other people are showing. Mm-hmm. I think he has a lot of great potential to be a force. He's already a big guy. He's not NFL body yet, but he's a big guy already. He's very quick. Um, We'll see what he he can do when we get him in the right technique and get him into the right position to make plays. But um, outside of that, you know, and as far as the other factors, we all know how that goes uh, with uh, CD Lamb. It, enough said, man. We you seen the tape. We seen the tape. We sure. all see it. <laughs> this is nothing to say. Sure. I got so many text messages when we drafted CD Lamb. I thought my phone was going to explode. Okay. Right. I was too busy playing beer pong with my old lady. I didn't even know we got C.D. Lamb. I, I tuned in from that point on to the draft. I said, uh-oh, it, 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 okay, so things are happening. Another thing is shout-out to Mike McCarthy for saying right. pretty much he was just like, um, on a, as a matter of fact, yeah, I'm the head coach. Let's, we're going to make these moves. Um, I think we got a lot of key um, pickups in the free agency um, that we're not really highlighting because, you know, mainstream media, they don't um, – they kind of count us out saying we lost several really, really uh, key factors in our defense. But honestly, I say we lost them. So I, <laughs> I didn't see anything where, I mean, we've been trying to get rid of Heath for years. Sure, so, sure. Um, yeah, uh, we lost a lot of uh, like, you know, um, like, like, you know, I would call them complimentary guys because I ain't want to call them like whatever, whatever's, but um, like Collins and all those guys. Yeah, I mean, we we could afford to lose those guys. I think the biggest loss was uh, Byron and Quinn or whatever, but I think. Absolutely. But I think <laughs> I think Team Toxic will be just fine. Um, and in terms of cornerback play, I mean, you know, you know, you know, maybe we won't run the same systems where you could just put Byron on a guy and just like leave him there. You know, maybe we'll have to be a little more um, creative. But hey, that's up to the to the coaches and DCs. I saw a um, question in my chat box that says, "Vach, do we have a number one corner, and can that do deal with number one receivers?" Well, there are more number one receivers in the league than there are number one corners, and they don't always go off every game. Sometimes you just got to work together and that's scheme your way. It's all about scheme. Scheme your way out. All about scheme. Yep. Yep, 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 one hundred percent. So, I think the biggest corner, the corner that has the most to prove, honestly, to me, and it's because he has the ability, mm-hmm. is uh, Anthony Brown. Anthony I think Brown. Yeah. he's he's had the year where he was very, very good. Very, it looked like he could have been a starter. Then he got put out there on the island. He got exposed. You know, mm-hmm. then we he went back to slot. So, you know, I think he has probably the most to prove, but I think he has. Uh, the potential to be he could possibly end up transitioning but it's all going to depend on him and obviously we we all want Trayvon Diggs to 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 end up being that guy I think he has a lot of upside you talked about his just raw talent raw physical talent and he hasn't really been able to to key in on technique yet so we're we're going to see with all of that so I'm, I'm listening I'm going to continue to listen to you guys when it comes to, to the real talk about football. I'm not really concerned about Stephen A. Smith and, and all of them. I don't care. Um, with that being said, you keep doing what you're doing. I ain't going to talk you to death, and I appreciate you giving me a, a little bit of your platform. Appreciate it, my guy. Salute. Great call, man. Reggie. So what I want to do now is – Rich, by the day. 
what I want to do now is just kind of look in my chat box for a little bit because I know a lot of y'all ain't got phones. A lot of y'all have talked up all of your anytime minutes, anytime. Some of you guys may be Roman. Some of you guys may be from Rome and can't call American numbers. It's fine. I'm going to give you an opportunity to express yourself in the chat box. I will look over and y'all will ask me a thousand questions when we taking calls. <laughs> so now it's your time. <clears throat> all right. So chat box, what are your questions? And if we have good questions, we'll probably hang around a little bit longer. If not, me and old Gug going to go watch Narcos. And I'll catch y'all next time. <laughs> but we'll see what's going on here. Not Damn, not Narcos. Ozark. Y'all up here talking about Narcos. We're, we're going to go watch Ozark. Now, what are your questions? <clears throat> Team Toxic got me hype as fuck. She. Uh, how many touches do you think Lamb get week one? Shit, all of them. Uh, but to be fair, like seven, <laughs> maybe. Eight, maybe. Uh, I wouldn't say nothing too, too crazy. I mean, because we got a huge offense, man. Huge offense. Zeke got to get some. And, you know, what I think make Lamb special is Lamb may not come in and be super guy day one. But what he'll do is he'll be a great matchup guy for us, you know, to where Lamb versus somebody's nickel corner will just win that matchup. You know, and Lamb may only have five or so catches, but his job is to make the best out of those five or so catches. You know, some games, for example, I always um always allude to the Eagles. The Eagles like to talk a lot of shit. Like, hey, we got Darius Slay, we're gonna shut Cooper down. Okay, cool, cool. We got eleven guys on offense, player. So you know, we'll, we'll those same guys that couldn't corner last year, <laughs> they they couldn't cover last year. They're they're covering Gallup now. And they're covering C.D. Lamb now, so I think that'll be a game where C.D. Lamb has an explosion. We know that we know that though, and I don't think I'm talking shit about the Eagles here because I don't I don't really do fan arguments like they fuss with me, so I fuss back at them. I don't think the Eagles DBs like to tackle. You got to tackle C.D. Lamb, so um, so I think he'll really excel in those games. Um, we got the Rams what week one, so Ramsey and Cooper be a good fight, but. You know, then we gotta resort to our other guys. Then we're gonna run run into some teams that that just don't even stand a chance. Let me let me pull up my hold on. Uh, <clears throat> let's see. Falcons, Seahawks, <laughs> uh, Browns got some corners, boy. I give you that. Browns got some guys over there. Uh, Giants. I think I think those would be like team wins, you know. Like Minnesota was a team win. Both the Washington games will be team wins, you know. But I think when we run into uh, teams that have the ability to possibly take Coop away, whether it be the the Rams or the Eagles, Pittsburgh could possibly take Coop away. Baltimore can possibly take Coop away. I think those will be the games where – we're going to need our second and third receivers. Thank God we got them. You know? Um, Richard Sherman on Coop don't necessarily scare me because I've seen what happens to Sherman when he, run, when he runs into these, like, you know, these quick guys or whatever. So, I don't know. It just it just depends week by week. So, I think week one will be good for Coop because uh, – it'll be good for Lamb because of the Ramsey-Coop matchup. So, that's that. Let me see what else y'all got. Donovan Wilson stealing a job. Mark my words. Well, um, hilarious Clint Dix ain't making that much money, so I can see it. What if we drop Tyrone Crawford? I, I hate dropping Tyrone Crawford. Um, and put that eight mil toward see, the whole clowny thing is not like we not going after clowny because we ain't got money. We got money to get clowny. It's just clowny's number too high. So even if we had Tyrone's eight million dollars, I still don't think we get clowny. We might as well just keep Crawford. And go get clowning. It's fine. Uh, Vice, what coaching decisions would be a head scratcher for you to the point that you would question coaching? I, I question coaching all the time. <laughs> At the end of Minnesota, like, let let that keep running. Um, let Tony get more touches. Um, Jordan Lewis should have been 
playing outside corner. Yeah, it's a lot of little little things. You know, some people think I don't hate on the coaches at all. I just do a real good job of talking about it. But if I separate my points, I talk shit about coaching all the time. I just believe player execution is just super important. Player execution is just super, super important. Um, why are we putting our three techs at one tech? <laughs> That's a coaching issue for me. Uh, it's, it's just a lot of stuff like that. What position are going to see the most competition during camp? I think the young defensive ends have the biggest fight of their lives. The young D, the 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 young D ends, and the kicking game corners got a hell of a fight. Hell of a fight, and whoever the hell the fifth receiver is, hell of a fight. Hmm. Why do people keep watching them uh, them Rogers highlights and not the whole film? When he drops slants. <laughs> well, because, you know, I blame it on attention span, you know. Um, and I hate when people use the word, oh, I don't have time to such and such and such and such. If I ain't got time to do something, I don't talk about it. <laughs> I don't talk about nothing. People are like, yo, Vach, what do you think about Gary Marino? I haven't gotten time to get there. So I'll get there, you know. So if you got time to talk about it, you should have time to research it, you know. Um, and I think a lot of people will say, oh, I don't have time to watch a lot of film on Kendrick Rogers. Well, you got time to to love him and defend him. You know what I'm saying? But that could just be a, you know, philosophy thing. But I tell you what, in a damn pandemic, there is no other time <laughs> than a damn quarantine to watch some film. I just think a lot of people don't want to watch film. I think it's just an attention span thing. I don't think it's a time thing. I just think it's a matter of attention span. That's all it is. And a lot of people don't like my videos because they don't have the, the, um, they don't have the, just to, to watch me replay a play and replay a play. That's what film is. That's what, like, what, like when we would play Friday and come watch film Saturday or even play Saturday and watch film on Sunday or whatever. Um, no matter what situation, every time I've watched film the next day, we rewind the shit out of it. Because we know we missed something the first time. Minimum of, of three times, at least. Great questions, though. Uh, exactly how much money do we owe for it? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't know that part of the game. Uh, do you see CD outperforming Coop? Not year one. Nah, I don't think so. I don't think so. I don't think so. Um, you still think we missing a piece in our, in our secondary, uh, you still think we missing a piece in our secondary, think we good on the line. I think we fine, man. I think if the, if the Cowboys have faith in what we doing at safety, then I should too, because the Cowboys have many safeties on the board at every round in the draft. And we just said, nah, I'm straight. Every time, every round, there was a safety that somebody liked this year and last year, but we just chose to say, nah, I'm straight. I'm straight. I'm good. I'm straight. I'm straight. You know? So, nah. Nah. I'm good on that. I'm good on safety if if they are. Vach, you said during the round table that no team on... Shit. <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> hey, wait a minute. Vach, you said during the round table that no team on our schedule scares you, and I agree. There are teams that I am anxious to know how we handle them. Like, what's our plan versus Baltimore and Kittle? Yeah, man, we're going to beat the shit out of them. I tell you what, you want to roll for Diggs week one? Put his ass on tight ends. <laughs> Run Brown and 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 Jordan and, um, and Cheeto out there. Just run that regular. And let and and let Diggs big ass chase these damn tight ends around. Let let Diggs six three long arm fast forty ass chase these tight ends around. Shit, that might be his first job. Put his ass on the line of scrimmage. Let him do that. Uh, Darius Slate went to the Eagles Cowboys counter with Ceedee Lamb. Sure, indubitably. Indubitably. But yes, uh CJ to answer your question though, I do think um I do get excited about matchups and knowing how we're gonna handle and deal with certain teams or whatever. I just that's just the 
the coach in you that wants to, you know, learn about the different chess moves and all that. So good job by you. This schedule looks like cake. No schedule looks like cake, but I ain't scared of you, though. <clears throat> Coop, Gallup, and Lamb, the greatest show on turf. It can't be. Can't be. Um, answering your questions, I'm really higher on Everson Griffin for the price. Uh, for the price he would pay for a better number for Dallas than the amount of snaps he could get. Um, Griffin's still out there, sure. Everson Griffin just still around there chilling, but I don't think nobody picked him up for a reason. I think it's a money thing. I, I think Clowney's a money thing. So we'll see. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see. Um, is this team the new Gresham? Probably, probably, probably. Uh, funny how they all on Chris Richard ass now, but some of them same people wanted Chris Richard to be the head coach six months ago. Hey man, look, look at hey, hey boy, look at him. Let me tell y'all something. The boy Drake said, "Look, is a is a, a Drake line for everything." He said, "The bandwagon full, but you can try and run behind it." That's big facts, sir. I knew it was something fishy about that Chris Richard fella. Oh, he would have got away with it if it wasn't for you meddling kids. Oh, Scoob and the gang. Oh, they exposed Chris Richard. Y'all going to listen to Vach one day. Vach, when can we extend Gallup? Do you uh, do you think it's going to be tough to keep him? When will we have a – well, I think uh, Gallup is up for extension in two years. So that's that. Um – do we extend them? I don't know. I don't know. All I can do is hope that Gallup wants a low number because I can see Gallup won some. Like, Gallup is going to get some. He's he's going to get his fair share of his offense, and Gallup is going to look really good. He's going to look really good. But we'll see. Uh, chances of these undrafted free agents being wide receiver four, five, or six? Well, um, so for Gendry and Parker and Rodgers, they would have to be Cedric Wilson, John V. Johnson, Noah Brown. You know what I'm saying? They they, they got some guys to beat. Uh, Ventrell Bryant, who does a lot of things in the kicking game for us. So, yeah. They got a long way to go. Do you think Dalton Schultz's job is in jeopardy? I do. You should take a look at my Sean McKeon film session. Check him out. We, we spoke on it before. Can't please them all. I know you all going to. Damn. Damn. <laughs> I hate when, when this thing lets me get like through half half of the question and then it scrolls to the bottom of the chat. <laughs> Come on. Uh, we spoke on it before. Can't please them all. I know you're going to hit me with a noir quote. I feel you. That's <laughs> noir quotes. I do what I do. Uh, with a new coach and a messed up offseason, is it reasonable to think that we're in eight and eighteen? Um, no. What's what's messed up about our offseason? No. Nah. Everybody quarantine. <laughs> Everybody quarantine. I don't think the quarantine is gonna play too big of a role because you know it'll still be just guys working out on their own anyway. You know, training camp ain't till July. You know. I think I think this whole pandemic thing will be done by July. So, nah. No, 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 no. Plus, um, new coaches win ball games. I mean, you know, if the team is good, hell man, Matt LaRue went to the championship last year, the um conference championship last year. In his first year. Um G D G D draw five and super chat says, Vach, I think Dax agent is holding up this deal. Absolutely. Um, a generous contract has been offered, making him the highest paid quarterback in the league. Your thoughts? Yeah, they disagreeing on on years. They're disagreeing on years. Uh Dax agent wants five years. Um, I mean, Dax agent wants four years so they can renegotiate for the new deals and all that. And Cowboys want the longer deal. They want five years to save that money to do more things with the team or whatever. I like what the Cowboys doing because if Dak takes the five years, then the TV deal happens and they get more salary cap, then you can pay Dak a big-ass number. Um, and when everything goes up, they'll have an additional $40 million in 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 in, um, in cap space just to add on the shit 
or even more, like forty, fifty, sixty dollars in in um in a cap room just to add on the shit. It's just that Dak's agent doesn't want Dak to play at that number, so they playing hardball. So, <clears throat> you know, neither side is wrong. It is what it is. It is what it is. So, um, we're gonna ask a few more questions. We're gonna get like five more questions in. Uh, yeah, Madden, Madden curse is whack. I do agree. Um, I'm gonna miss Heath. Everyone hated him for no reason. Facts. Heath Heath is one of the goats. They're gonna start listening one day. They will, they will, they will. Gallup or Jamar Chase, relax, Chris. <laughs> relax. Jamar Chase is amazing. Uh is that the Rams new logo? Yes, sir. That is indeed the Rams new whack ass logo. Uh, Chase is just a speed guy. False. Jamar Chase is not just a speed guy. Jamar Chase is actually very physical. He's um a, he's a great yak guy. He understands spacing and he's fantastic. I think he was the best receiver in college football last year. Better than Lamb and Judy. Lamb was the better the best receiver in that draft, but. I do think Jamar Chase was the best receiver in college football last year. But that's just my opinion. I ain't shit. Uh, and there's T-Rod just reaffirming that Jamar Chase is way more than speed. There you go. Get him, T-Rod. Um, I will not kick I will not kick Spinny JP just because we disagree. I don't I wouldn't dare do that. Um, if there's no fan home field advantage, may not really be a factor. Dallas is already. I talked to my man Sadie Fresh uh, the other day. We was, we was talking about the UFC, and he was like, "Man, it's kind of weird watching these fights with no fans." I'm like, "You crazy? I'm enjoying this. I don't care about the fans, no way. <laughs> I don't care about no goofy ass drunk UFC fans, no way." And he was like, "Do you think? Uh, do you think football gonna be good?" She, I love football so much. I look because I've played JV before. I've played football. Where there's no fans. It ain't that bad. <laughs> you get to think better. I actually prefer playing football with no fans because you can hear better. <laughs> I played center and my quarterback didn't have bass in his voice. I love playing ball with no fans. Like, who cares about fans? Give me football and we'll cross that road later on. <sighs> Appreciate your response. Um uh... What would you do if Jimmy G smokes y'all defense? Who cares? Uh, you're a Niners fan, so you're talking from this from this level of emotion. It's it's okay. I understand. Um, you know I don't like to go back and forth with fans, man. I just don't. I don't get fan. I don't. By the life of me, I don't get fan rivalries. By the life of me. I don't get it. And the only reason I fuss with Giants and Eagles fans is because they've been the most annoying to me over the past, what, six years? Because when the Giants are winning, they like to talk shit to Vach. And when the Eagles are winning, they like to talk shit about Vach. I've never heard a 49er fan say a thing to me. They make a playoff run, you can't miss them now. <laughs> I'm not in the business for changing people's minds. I'm just not in the business of it, especially if I don't know you, <laughs> especially if I don't know you, sir. Nah, do your thing. Do your thing, Niners fan. Uh, uh, what's my man? Because he tuned in to all my shows. Uh, YNW Jamal, you in the rap group with him? <laughs> salute to you. You and your – salute to you, man. Salute. Even when the Cowboys play for it, I'm not going to hate you then. It's just going to be analysis, my guy. So salute. Anyway, um, bah, 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 bah. I'm going to chill. I'm I'm going to chill out, but we will revisit this again down the road. What are we revisiting? What's this? Fane, Fane and JP. Oh, that must be Spinny JP. Is that Spinny JP? Fane and JP. Same thing. That show. That show. Uh, that show. Uh, YouTube name. Spinny JP. Fane and JP. Okay, I got you. I got you. Has it has it been that the whole time? And I just made up Spinny. Has it been that the whole time? Oh, I don't know. Um, 
49ers fans are fair. I never heard of a 49ers fan in my, in my life. I've never seen one. They like Bigfoot. Never seen them. Now everybody got a Bigfoot video. <laughs> Uh, that's what we're here for, Vach. We got you. Thank you so much, Lingo Rasa. Salute to you, sir. Mm. Oh, my God. Bills fans are annoying, too. Where, where, where all this come from? This Look, look. this this funny part. Bills fans be hating on me nowadays because I was like, yeah, man, Cobb's better than Beasley. It's, it's okay. That ain't hating on Beasley. I just think Cobb's better than Beasley. And I think even with an injury – Cobb finished the year with better numbers than Beasley, I think. Or, or like, really close. I think better numbers than Beasley. And then I said him, like, what do you think about those Bills beating your Cowboys? I'm like, <laughs> what do you want me to say? <laughs> go hug your – look, man, go hug your mother or something, man. <laughs> <laughs> what do you want me to say? Cobb's still better than Beasley. Oh, man. Um, You're going to answer a few more. I'm going to ask a few more. Bro, who do you think gets Francis next? DC need to chill. Well, Rue Glock, this is the problem. And on my next, you know, YouTube channel, I'm, I'm going to get into a lot of other sports, man. I love MMA, man. I'm a big UFC fan, bro. This is the problem with Francis, right? Stipe, I hurt. So Stipe ain't going to be fighting very soon till like August or something. Francis is ready to be the champion right now. I don't think DC want to fight for him. I think DC either want to fight John or Stipe or retire. But this the problem. Okay, cool. Well, let's either make an interim belt or let's vacate the belt and make Francis fight for the belt. This the problem. This this the big problem with that. If Francis is number three, Dos Santos, Overeem, Curtis Blades, twice really, Curtis Blades and Rosenstrike just got knocked out by Francis. Not too long ago, in a first round fashion, immediately, and Cain Velasquez. So, in case you want to come back from wrestling, from from fake fighting, all those guys just got smoked. So, from your number, <laughs> Andre Olovsky, from your number three guy to your number eight guy, Francis has smoked everybody except Derek Lewis. I guess that's your fight. I guess that's your fight. Um, so now you put yourself in a situation where you either want John to go to heavyweight, DC to get brave, um, a Derrick Lewis fight, or or Rue Glock, you ready? Chat box, you ready? You want Anthony Rumble Johnson to come back and fight a heavyweight. That's the only thing I see. And if Rumble Johnson come back and fight a heavyweight, oh, shit. Oh, shit. That's it. But anyway. The 49ers fan in the chat box says John will be all of them, man. Listen, man, I'm, I'm, I mean, I feel you, but John got to figure his own way class out first. Um, John been looking a little iffy lately. Plus, I think there's a reason John don't want to fight heavyweight. I think some heavyweights are a good look for John, like those smaller heavyweights. Like John to fight Verdum or like John to fight Stipe. But I don't even think John want to fight DC at heavyweight. It's just different. John definitely does not want to fight Francis Ngannou at no damn heavyweight. He don't want to do that. But anyway, do you think CeeDee Lamb would be one of the greatest ever, the greatest receivers ever to come through Dallas? Indubitably. Shit, one day. One day. <laughs> Mike Tyson. Mike Tyson scared the shit out of me. Every time I see Mike Tyson punch his heavy bag, I get anxiety because he ain't supposed to be that fast at fifty. Whatever, fifty, whatever, however old he is, fifty, whatever, he ain't supposed to be. He ain't supposed to be doing that. <laughs> he ain't supposed to be doing that. Mm mm. Mm mm. Uh, John beat DC twice. What you mean? I agree about DC. I think he retired before. Uh, yeah, he, he don't want to go in there, friends. Um, about you messing with Greg Hardy. Hey, man, Greg Hardy out there, you know, beating up the people that they put in front of him. I think UFC, like, slowly putting guys in front of Greg Hardy, man. I don't think they want to rush Greg Hardy too much. <laughs> but, boy, you don't want to put Greg in front of Francis right now. 
He don't want to put Greg in front. Boy, Greg would rather go back and pass rush an old miss before he fight Francis. Jeez. One more question and I'm leaving. The next good question I'll answer. We talked about Tyson for a little bit. I mean, you know. I read this report somewhere that Tyson's Fury's dad wants to fight Mike Tyson. And I thought that shit was a bad idea in general. Then I saw the little tape that Mike Tyson put out today. Talking about some I'm back and I'm like, come on, son. Mike Tyson. <laughs> come on. I'm going to ask Okoye what he think about that. Uh, biggest downfall to great fighter is moving uh, moving into weight classes they shouldn't be in. Agreed. Uh, Dallas got the best pound for pound for fighter. Errol Spencer got to fight. Uh, got to fight Crawford, man. He got to fight Crawford. That's the fight for him. So, okay. Cowboys will beat the Redskins. One more question, then we go. One more question, and then y'all go watch my Rondell Carter film session after. Uh, after we get a good question. One more question. I don't think Dak will hold out, but what do I know? Do you think Zeke will have more than 1,400 yards? I don't know. I tell you what, this is another thing that's funny about Zeke, man. Like, people thought Zeke fell off. Like, I think Zeke was still, like, fifth in rushing this year. Maybe, like, six or something. Um, I don't think Zeke fell off. I just think Dak damn near threw for 5,000. Well, he threw 5,000. He just – Dak just broke all the records. If Dak wasn't out here breaking all the records, then Zeke will be, you know what I'm saying? Zeke will probably, he probably would have led the league in rushing again. But we just, you know, Zeke's usage is different now. And I kind of like it this way. I kind of like Dak being the man and Zeke being the compliment to that. I kind of like it. I kind of like it. Anything else? Hey, Vice, I thought about Washington having Alex Smith back in. I thought that they would be good. This is my problem with Alex Smith, man. If Alex Smith comes back, he'll be the best quarterback on on uh, on Washington roster. But the problem is, I don't want to be the I don't want to be the team or the guy to where my team hit Alex and I can't celebrate because Alex's legs might not work no more. I think Alex might need to go ahead and retire, man, because I don't want to have the maturity to have to deal with that on my conscience. You know what I'm saying? I don't want to have to deal with that. <laughs> he said, <laughs> "I do love, I do love, uh, I do love Tony Pollard, but a part of me feels like he is held back with the Cowboys. But I don't want him to." Be. Well, and this is my last question, and and we're gonna wrap this up. The good thing about uh, Mike McCarthy is that, first of all, I think in terms of offense, I think we we've upgraded every single position that Mike McCarthy has ever had, ever, except for quarterback. I think it's the best receiving core, the best running back, the best offensive line Mike McCarthy has ever had. Uh, we ain't got Aaron Rodgers, but then we got Dak Prescott, and I think Dak is Dak is damn good enough to win. Um, so what Mike McCarthy would do is he'll run Cheeseburger, and he'll run Starks, and he'll and you know he'll kind of be an auxiliary dude, the backup guy, and he'll also run Montgomery out there. You know, so on top of having receivers, Mike McCarthy will also use three running backs, and I say that to say I think um, I think uh, I think Tony Pollard gets a gets a gets a big bump in usage. I think he gets a uh, a big jump in usage. You know what I'm gonna do? I think I'm a, um, I think after I wrap this up, I'm gonna go on the internet and find a list of content creators for other teams. Cause I really think the Cowboys do it best. I do think the Cowboys have the best online content creators out of everybody. And I ain't just saying that cause I'm on that team, man. But you know, um, you know, Vach, Law, Foot Sequoia, man, like what we do, man. And not even my round table guys, like, like everybody. Cause you know, there are some people that watch, um, E2 Blues channel. And they don't fool with Vach, you know what I'm saying? Like, and that's fine. You know, you you just may connect there better than you would connect with my channel. It's, it's fine. Um, I do think the Cowboys have the best, um, you know, YouTube content creators out of anybody in the league. I really do think that. So what I want to do, just to kind of look around, just to kind of see what the vibe is, 
I just want to look up other little channels or whatever and see what their content creators are like. Because we get all kind of people coming to watch our show. And I like, I understand I talk about everybody during draft season. Like I just cover everybody because I belong to everybody during draft season. But even when we just talking Cowboys for how long we've been talking? Let me let me pull this up. How long we've been talking? We've been talking for damn near two hours. Even me talking Cowboys for two hours. It's interesting how we'll still get people from other channels to just kind of come in and just listen. And I just think that just says a lot about how dope Cowboy content creators are. I think it's fire. I think it's fire, man. And I'm proud of us, man. I'm, 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 I'm proud of what we've done, what we do and all that. I'm proud of the information that we put out. And I'm also uh, very proud how authentic it is. That's what I'm most proud about. Before I leave, that's how most proud I am of how authentic it is. You know, um, when we when we do these roundtables, we don't pregame and be like, all right, so me and Law Nation going to take this side. Okoye, you and Fuss take that side. We're going to fuss with each other. That'll be whack. That'll be whack. I think what's dope is that when we go into a roundtable, we don't know who the hell going to be fussing at the end of it. You know? A lot of the times it's Foots and Okoye cussing, uh, uh, um, fussing. Last time, Foots and Okoye both picked the bone with me, and I had to defend myself. I think that's interesting. I think that's dope, and I think it says a lot about what we do and how important authenticity is. You know what I'm saying? I think that's important. I think that's important. Um, so, yeah, man, I'm, I'm just going to tune in to some – yeah, I'm just gonna tune um um tune into some other YouTubers, man, just to kind of get an idea for what they doing over there. Not to not to talk no shit on nobody, man. Not to be like you know, not to I, I ain't gonna comment. I'm not even gonna comment, man. I just kind of want to go over there and just kind of get the vibes of what they doing over there. You know what I'm saying? I just want to get you know just so I can you know have an understanding, just so I can have just so I can have an understanding, man. You know, maybe I'll learn something. Maybe I'll learn something, and, you know, that'll make me a better Cowboys YouTube. So, uh, hey, Uncle Charlie in the chat box. Salute, Uncle Charlie. Appreciate you, man. Uh, we, we we about to wrap the show up, though, Uncle Charlie. Call in next time, man. We're going we gonna, to we, we gonna definitely get you in there, man. But um, I appreciate y'all for tuning in, man. appreciate y'all for, for you know, listening, listening to me ramble and talk about all this little mess, man. Um, you know, y'all – Y'all run to my film sessions and you and you 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 value what I have to say. And that means a lot to me. It means a lot to me, man. I, I appreciate y'all. And uh that's why I'm making this investment opposed to <laughs> spending money on guns, butter, and shoes. You know what I'm saying? Uh, you know, and you know, Vegas and gambling, all these things that I could be doing, PS fives and all that. Uh we're gonna make this channel fantastic, man. I have a vision for what this channel can be. And it keep me up at night, man. It keep me up at night how great I think this 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 uh this YouTube channel can be. I just need y'all to have a little bit of faith in me. What my man, what my man Dutch say, Dutch Vandalin, he say, have some faith, man. Have some faith. If y'all have faith in me, uh, I'm gonna <laughs> I'm gonna do some ridiculous things with this, man. Some ridiculous things. Also, before I leave, I see uh Joe Sandberg in the chat box. He asked me early, he said, Vice, what do you think about uh Jalen Hurts being the um the 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 highest uh bought rookie jersey so far this year? Boy, how bad is Carson Wentz going to be when he roll up in the stadium and he see all them damn number twos on and he see all them Hurst jerseys on? <laughs> Y'all hold it down for the Doski Woski, the Peace Ski Weeski, man. Until next time, peace.